Biblical Christianity isn't about making moral people. There are plenty of moral people out in the world, people who are good on the outside who do the right things. It's not about the right rituals or the right words or the right actions, although having these things doesn't disqualify you from having a genuine experience. After studying this entire season of studying Galatians, it's simply of the cross of Christ. Join us in this final episode in the season of Galatians in learning about Jesus on the inside and on the outside and all over on this episode of Inverse. Welcome to Inverse, everyone. We're so happy that you decided to track with us through every episode, all 14 episodes of the letter to the Galatians, at least for this, this quarter. And this is our final episode, kind of a sad ending to this. We're going to look at, be in chapter 6 and look at verses 12 through 15 that Israel's going to read. We are in Galatians 6 in verse 12. As many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh, these would compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For not even those who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised, that they may boast in your flesh. But God forbid that I should boast, except in the cross of Christ our Lord Jesus, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. Amen. Thanks, Israel. Join us at the table here. And Jared, you want to lead us? Prayer, please. Yeah, let's yeah. pray together. Thanks. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. Thank you that we have the privilege of studying it, that you've preserved it so that we can understand who you are. Continue to reveal yourself to us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And Callie, what's been going on this entire season? Maybe some people oh, are watching and they start from the last episode. I don't know. And, <laughs> and they're like, man, what's the show all about? Well, kind of oh, uh, <laughs> pressure's lot. on. What's, what, what have we been going on, especially last episode, to kind of pick up and can jump into? So we've been in the book Galatians the mm -hmm. whole time. And this is, a, yeah, this is a letter from Paul to the people in Galatia. Uh -huh. And last time we were talking about a lot of practical things. Yeah. The first uh, five chapters have been more theological or first four chapters, but more theological mm -hmm. in nature. But this past time, we're talking a lot about what does it mean to be a practical Christian day to day? How do we bear our own burdens? How do we bear each other's burdens? How do we sort of the flesh? How do we make sure we're walking the spirit and God bears fruit in our lives? Mm -hmm. That's kind of the practical side we were talking about in this mm -hmm. past episode. Yeah. Jared, does, uh, we've been talking about like, the fruit and, and the and practical stuff and, and lust of the flesh, um, outside and on inside. Are, yeah. What's more important? Do they affect each other? Kind of. Yeah. Well, Paul's Paul's saying there's there's a lot of people out there. They're trying to clean you up on the outside so they can boast in how good you look. But yeah. that's that's not what it's all about. And that's true. But like everything else in Scripture, there's a balance, and we find a lot of answers where it's it's both yes and no. So, mm -hmm. so no, the outside doesn't make a difference. But yes, it, it outside <laughs> behaviors. They do make a difference. Yeah. It, I mean, if I'm if I'm staying up late all night every night, um, how can I get up in the morning to spend time with Jesus? If I'm filling my body with uh, cheeseburgers and fatty foods and whatever, it's going to clog my system up so that my brain can't think, yeah. um, you know, and connect with Jesus um, on your a spiritual level. Your outside behaviors level. has an impact on your inside. You definitely see a generational divide, perhaps, where one generation says it's all about the dignity of the exterior, mm -hmm. it's about the uh, decorum, and, and as long as everything, there's an idiom in Korean circles, you're like a duck, where above the water you are as cool as a duck, <laughs> but like that's it. not the idiom. Cool. But, right. but <laughs> underneath the water, cool. their legs are just like, and sense. so there's all these issues going on. But you just kind of play cool. Deep. Whereas uh, there's another generation that says, "I want to be real. I want to be authentic. I'm going to just be as 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 transparent, as transparent. <laughs> and whatever's on the inside is just going to all come out. No filter. Everything. No filter. And they don't really care life. about the outside. Yeah. And mm -hmm. both are kind of in this ditch together. Yeah. 
Yep. Mm -hmm. Kelly, what are some examples that, well, when some people focus on the outside, they do it at the expense of the inside? Well, I can say a very real experience for myself has been where I, let's say I've been preaching or I've been doing a lot of ministry, a lot of good Jesus things. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, wow, Kelly, such a good server of Jesus. But I'm serving so much that I'm not even spending time with the Lord myself. Mm. So I am giving, I'm giving, I'm giving, but at the end, what can, what can Callie give mm. that is of everlasting power? Nothing. Mm. All of my power comes from Jesus. And so I might look like I have it all together. I have the right answers. I have the good sound bites. Mm. I'm all this way. But if I don't have that connection with Jesus, You're it really doesn't duck. mean anything. I'm basically a duck. A duck. Yep. A duck. <laughs> Israel, can someone have this new experience in Christ and then not have anything change on the inside? No, it's impossible. Or outside. Uh, it's impossible. It's impossible for us, for us to have a real legitimate experience with Jesus and not experience transformation. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus came to give us more abundant life, meaning that we were dead, we were once dead. And so it's impossible for us to have an encounter with Christ and to walk away the same. Look at Moses, right? When Moses had an encounter with God, <laughs> people knew. He didn't have to uh, try to make something up. People, uh, people knew immediately. They yeah. knew this guy has been with God face to face. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. go to verse, uh, yeah, Jared. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Um, hey, I just wanted to mention that um, what, what he's talking about is critical because we, we want to clean up the outside. And yeah. we're okay with that. And yeah. we don't ever want to touch the inside. And Jesus blasted that idea when he was talking to the Pharisees. And he said, you guys are like a cup. You know, you clean the outside, it's nice, shiny, but you didn't wipe the inside out where it's all nasty. You're like a tomb that's, that's whitewashed, but inside's full of you Dead know, people. decaying <laughs> flesh and bone. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not a pretty picture. But what the point Israel is making is that transformation starts on the inside, but it leaks out into yeah. everything else. You know, I, I've seen about when I, when I travel different countries and you see the difference of cultures, uh, me being an American, but of a Korean descent, you see this kind of uh, difference between the Asian, the Eastern and the Western and, and European, mm -hmm. Eurocentric. And it's very, you know, the West is very into privacy. You know, mm -hmm. you change the outside, don't you dare come on the inside. <laughs> what, what, you're asking a couple questions. You're trespassing on my privacy, That's especially right. when it comes to religion and spirituality. I was going to say, you think of the question like, oh, how are you doing? I'm good. Even if you're not good, you're good. Yeah, and you just kind of push it answer. away, and there's, yeah. a, there's a distance. As mm -hmm. long as there's distance, we're cool. Mm -hmm. On the East, it's like everyone's just smashed all together and whatnot. <laughs> but they, similarly, they have no sense of privacy because they deny that the inside even exists. Hmm. You are not an individual. You have no inside. So all you focus on the outside and the mate, everyone has the same face on the outside. But so whether you're of the East or the West, we're, same, we're in the same sinful condition that Jesus is trying to change your inside. Yeah. I think that's what Paul is getting into. Let's go to verse 12 here. As many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh, these would compel you to be circumcised. Again, we talked about circumcision in a different episode. Mm -hmm. Only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For, even, for not even those who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. In your flesh. Uh, verse 14 also talks about boasting in the cross. Israel, what is this boasting? Why are they boasting? Well, first, I think there's something there that in verse 12 that is significant for okay. us to look at. And mm -hmm. it says, only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Mm. It's, it's, this is, it's an amazing phenomenon that exists in the Christian experience that in many, many ways, mm -hmm. it's actually easier for us to work our way or to try to work our way to heaven than to allow Jesus to transform the life. Mm -hmm. that's, how, that's how critical and, and, and dangerous the human condition is, right? And, and it's like Jesus, Jesus once taught, right? He said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they will be filled. It's talking about a desire, hungering and thirsting equates you to real Christian. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you don't hunger for this, if you don't thirst for this, you're not a Christian at all. Mm -hmm. And so that's why there's a blessing with it. It's the same way. I can't make myself hungry for something. It's, a, it's an experience that it's, that's going to naturally come to me when I'm, when I'm, I'm in need of food, right? Mm -hmm. And this is what's happening. People here are like, let me, let me suffer. Let me suffer outwardly. Let me like beat myself up. Let me climb the stairs on my knees. Let me, let me work my way in some way to get to heaven. Just don't let me be persecuted for the sake of the cross. Mm -hmm. Just don't let me suffer, suffer 
uh, uh, for what really matters, right? Mm -hmm. And in many, many ways, it's easier for us to try to work our way to heaven than to allow Jesus to work in us mm -hmm. uh, to do of his, of his good pleasure. You know, I think part of that, I'm just listening to you right now, is I think part of that is, it's really just about control. Mm -hmm. I can control my own suffering if I know the works I'm doing, right? Okay, I need to walk on these steps. Well, I know what that feels like, and mm -hmm. it's suffering, but I'm controlling it. Versus if you're asking Jesus to come into your life, or there's some kind of persecution out there, you don't know what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. So it's like a surprise, and you no longer have a controlling factor there. Yeah, yeah. you kind of control, you customize your, your, your settings suffering. of suffering. Yeah. Like, yeah, too much. Yeah. We'll suffer more tomorrow. Oh, Lord, it's on level nine. Uh, I deserve to be saved at level nine. And yeah, yeah it, it is about a, a control. Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, let's go back to boasting, though. I mean, he says you're either boasting in verse 14. Um, where are we? Bo uh, verse 13, you boast in your flesh or you boast in the cross. And this is kind of his concluding thought for, yeah. for Galatians. Why, why boasting? Why isn't boasting prideful? Isn't boasting kind of PR, propaganda, loud voice? Jared? Boasting, boasting is when you're boasting in yourself and saying, I did some wonderfully great thing, and you kind of stick, stick your, your, your chest out a little bit, and, and you're, you're kind of absorbing <laughs> that, that spot, that glory, <laughs> yeah. as opposed to saying, you know, this is what Jesus did for me. Like, mm -hmm. it's still boasting. It's like when you have a lot of pride in a family member that accomplished something, a son or daughter, a parent, a brother, and you yeah. say, did you see this amazing work that they did? Yeah. Um, it, it's, it should be like that only on a higher level because you're pointing to the God of the universe and, and what he did in your yeah. life. Yeah, yeah, I think even that example, I think about, you know, there could be a, uh, like a father who boasts about their son, say, wow, look what my son did so amazing. Or it could be like, look at my son. I raised that boy. Mm. You know, that, that's still True. like, that's still back to you it goes back, yeah. versus you're actually boasting in something. And I think else. that's the point oh, here in verse 14 that, that Callie's just wonderfully bringing out. He's boasting in, not in Jesus. He's not boasting in Christ, although he is, but it's a very specific. He says, he boasts in the cross. Very specifically in verse 14 it says, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. So this, this factor that he's boasting about, is he's not saying how awesome God is and how powerful God is. He's like, he's God died. <laughs> God, I mean, he's, he's boasting in that fact that he was yeah. crucified. And second in verse 15, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. So. Like he's, Jesus died and I'm created in that. Two things that he's boasting in. What, what is a nice Christian symbol that we find in other passages that, 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 that goes, that, that illustrates this? Death and resurrection. Yeah, baptism. baptism. Totally baptism, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, love, I love this illustration here. Um, Callie, what does it mean, this, this new creation that, that, uh, that Paul's talking about? Uh, I think, well, it's, it's really just that. When you think about something that's created, it's not an addition or an alteration, mm -hmm. but it's completely new. Mm -hmm. Everything's new. Everything's new. Everything. So, um, so Israel, someone, to, to someone who's died, what is, what is their, their relationship to the world from this point on in the cross? It says, the world has been crucified to me and I've been crucified to the world. That's what Paul is saying. This is, Paul is expressing in this kind of situation, he's expressing beauty and death. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to come back after the break and we're going to look at different aspects of, of this concluding passage. I mean, he's kidding his apex here in the letter of Galatians. We'll be back after the break and you're watching Inverse.
Hey, welcome back to Inverse. We're going to go here to Experiencing the Cross. The three panelists, three of my friends, dear friends, how has the cross been a, a powerful experience? We know Jesus and the Holy Spirit, but he specifically mentions the cross, a means of execution in ancient times. How has the cross been a and powerful And he says boasting experience? in the cross. Boasting. He says boasting in the yeah. cross. I can, I can resonate here with Paul yeah. uh, because of experiences that I've personally had in my life, right? There was, there was a time in my life where I wanted to clean up my language. And no matter how hard I tried, no matter how much I... I mean, can, you know, you're speaking Spanish and you want to learn more English. <laughs> like what what I kind could, of language? I couldn't control my, I couldn't control my language, so whether it's Spanish bad words, coming bad out. words coming bad out. Bad words. Yeah. Okay. In Spanish and English and, <laughs> and as people say in French, right? And, and, uh, and, and it was just, it was the lack of control in my life and in, huh. my, in my ability to express myself. I could not say a sentence without putting in some type of a curse word in there. Mm. And I tried and I tried and I tried and I wanted to be a Christian and I knew that if I was going to be a Christian that my language needed to represent the language of heaven, the language of Christ. And I couldn't, I couldn't, get, I couldn't get a victory over that no matter how much I tried and no matter how hard I, I, how much effort I put into this until finally I came to the point where I had to give up. I surrendered. I'm like, God, I can't do this. I can't do this. And it is then that the thought came to me that Christ is able to do for me that which I cannot do for myself. Mm. And I wanted to get to the point where I wish that this thing would just completely leave me alone, where it would die, mm. where I would die in that sense. And so the cross became a beautiful thing for me, right? That Jesus has the ability to do something that I cannot do. I cannot kill myself. I can't put myself and nail myself on that cross. Yet Jesus can do it. It's a powerful uh, imagery that you're, you're bringing up here that I mean, he died by the cross. He didn't die by another means where he could kill himself. Mm -hmm. An external entity had to do the killing on his behalf. And so similarly for us, yeah. we can't do anything about it. We need an external entity to, to kill us and an external entity to even resurrect us Absolutely. from it. Yeah, powerful. Yeah, so Jesus, Jesus, even though Jesus is the source of life, mm -hmm. he brings beauty to death. He makes mm -hmm. death beautiful. And so the cross... Paul is looking at this and he says, you know what? The, the cross is beautiful. I want to boast in this cross. It's an ugly instrument of torture. It has been an ugly instrument of torture, mm -hmm. but Jesus changed all of that. He made this ugly thing a very beautiful experience. And so Paul says, if there's anything I'm going to boast, I want to tell you about yeah. the beauty of the death of the cross. Mm. Can I boast a little yeah, bit in the sure. cross? Is that okay? <laughs> I, uh, I, it's, it's funny. I, I was not, I didn't have a lot of Christian background. And um, I can remember this period of time when I surrendered my life to Jesus and um, involved in a lot of things I won't go into detail uh, on here. But... Uh, I was always kind of a little bit afraid, of, well, not a little bit afraid of the police, but when I would see, when I'm driving down the streets, I grew Popo. up in, the, in, in, uh, in Denver, Colorado, I'm driving down the street, <laughs> and I see, and I live not too far from the police station, so I'd pass it, and it's just like, sit up straight, seat belts buckled, doing everything right, because there's this inner fear that if they pulled me over, and there were times where I was pulled over, and I wound up in the back of a squad car because of some <laughs> things that I had in my car, okay? So, That's found in chapter 5. That yeah, no, that are, real, yes, real, yes. Real, okay. fear of, real fear of the police. I didn't think about it until I was driving down the road, and I saw a police car, and I'm just like, I didn't, I didn't think anything of it until I passed, and I realized no fear. I, I, there's no fear anymore. Uh. Mm. That, that comes from the cross, um, that transformation that comes through the cross, not just the love of Jesus that was displayed there that, that drew me to the cross, the love that was displayed that caused me to surrender my life to this Jesus who gave his life for me, but the blood that was shed there that wiped out all of the record of sins mm -hmm. and, and looking back and thinking, I'm a different person. I have a totally different attitude and relationship to, you know, the authority and the laws of the land because of what the cross did for me. Yeah. And I think, you know, really? I, 
so I have kind of similar experience, but with the self police? self no, oh, not self. police. Okay. Oh, you I've never been, stuff I've, in never the been car. I've never been pulled right. over <laughs> yet. <laughs> um, so growing up, um, was very very self conscious, mm. especially of my appearance. Mm. Um, there's media there, there's all the different things that tell us, you know, especially as women, of a certain way we need to be. Mm. But it wasn't so much. So my thought was, okay, I want to stop being self conscious. I want to be convinced that I'm the most beautiful person ever. Mm. And so I was always trying to convince myself if enough guys told me if I was beautiful, if enough girls told me I was beautiful if enough anyone just would tell me that I'm beautiful all the time then I'd be good mm -hmm. but that's not what Jesus did mm -hmm. Jesus crucified that need he crucified that need to be affirmed by people all the time of having a fourth compliment all the time it was just it's not it's just like almost an apathy and so even coming, you know, on the studio with you guys and, you know, being on cameras and be like, oh, man, people are going to look at my face and they're going to look at my hair. And what are they going to think? But it's like, who cares? <laughs> I'm going to come on this show. and We're going to talk about Jesus. And that's what's important. And so Jesus didn't just say, OK, Kelly, I'll convince you that you're beautiful. I'm gonna, he says, I'm going to convince you that it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It matters who you are as a person. It matters that you're my daughter. Mm -hmm. That's what matters. So Jesus doesn't just fulfill, but he crucifies the things that we don't even need. Mm -hmm. And he even makes us, he go back to the new creation. He makes us someone new, that it changes what matters. And we have the priorities of heaven. So we have the, the self-conscious Callie is dead. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, we have the foul-mouthed Israel is dead. And we have the paranoid uh, Jared. Police running away. Police running away. <laughs> the criminal. The criminal. The criminal. criminal. <laughs> it's dead. It's dead. Yeah. Like this is what the community of Christ is. Mm -hmm. a, a people who are dead and then now resurrected in, in Christ. The and dead, I love, but beautiful. alive in a vibrant and powerful and beautiful yeah. way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I love how he says, I have been crucified to the world and the world has also been crucified to me. Mm -hmm. And it, it talks about what she's saying, more than just deliverance from the things that we need, he takes away he takes away the thing itself, right? It's he, not one or two little things here. It's just a complete rebooting of Like it's no longer an issue. Like it's yeah. just He gone. takes away the issue, yeah. mm -hmm. the yeah. issue yeah. itself. Yeah. Well, let's look at the last final three verses here. And we're going in verse 16. As many as walk according to this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the, the Israel of God. Verse 17, from now on, let no one trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Verse 18, brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. I, I love the ending. It's a nice, nice ending. A couple questions I have. One is, um, Israel, what are these marks on the, the Lord Jesus here? Is that... You know, what's going on there? Scar tissue? The marks of the Lord Jesus are <laughs> the persecutions, the challenges that he had to face, right? Yeah. The, the challenges that he had to go through for the sake of the gospel. Jared, when he says that, he says, hey, that no one should, should trouble because of these marks. What, what's that verse saying? Well, this guy had, had physical marks, but not just physical marks on his body, but, um, but also... The persecution that he had. And persecution comes in a variety of forms. And actually, Paul says that all who live godly in Christ Jesus suffer shall persecution. suffer persecution. So mm -hmm. not only has he experienced it very real, floating in the ocean in the middle of the night, uh, being bit by snakes, being th thrown out of a city and left for dead and getting up and, and, and going back in the city to <laughs> preach. That's crazy. I mean, the, the dude was alive with the love of Jesus and these are, these are real persecutions that, that he bore. And if, yeah. and if we're courageous in following Jesus, you know, we're going to have these things also. So these aren't, these, he's not saying that we should go out on the cross like some people do. I saw in the news of Philippines that they would go on the cross and they try to be, they'd actually crucify themselves to feel the stigmata that, that mm. you, this is just this general things that, are, that Paul's happening to his own body. Mm -hmm. His own body. Callie, I, I, verse 18 there, is there any meaning, any significance that Galatians starts with grace and then ends with grace? And there's a lot of some rocky, oh, yeah. foolish, you know, Galatians <laughs> in between. But yeah. is it cool that we have a, a grace sandwich here? I think, in, you know, even in that part where he says, oh, foolish Galatians, the reason they're foolish is because they're walking away from grace. Mm. And so threaded throughout the entire book is this narrative of grace. But, very well. And so I just think that's significant because he's, that's just his point. Every single thing that he's blasting them about or encouraging them about is like, you need to get back to the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's mm -hmm. always his point. Paul says where grace abound, where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. Mm -hmm. And what I love about the, the beginning and the ending of Galatians is that there is so much sin there. And the greatest sin is walking away from Christ. That's where another, like choosing another gospel, there's no greater sin than yeah, that, right? <laughs> and, and, and what I love about this context is that 
God is not afraid of our sin, right? He's not afraid of it. It's, we think, man, I've, I've, I've gone too far. No, where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. It's like God says, what do you have for me? What, what are you afraid of, right? What do you have for me? What do you think I'm going to shy away from? You, you think you have leprosy. I can't heal that. Not only do I speak leprosy out of, out of existence, I'll grab on to you mm-hmm. and I'll hold on to you to let you know that sin has absolutely zero power mm-hmm. over me. Where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is exemplified in the book of Galatians. Mm-hmm. So we've been talking a lot of, of internal stuff and spiritual stuff and, and we're dead. Yeah, and we've been resurrected and there are unity and love and, and we're dead. <laughs> so a question I have is this, is, is Christianity, is it, are Christians relegated to just the spiritual side? Are we now dead to the world? And what is our reaction to world issues of, of hunger, the environment, abortion, euthanasia, uh, war, terrorism? Like what's our, are we just like, oh, we're, we're, we're dead in the cross. You know, what is our reaction? Is, well, dead is to the world is speaking about dead to worldliness, mm. right? Not to the people of the world, not to the environment in which we live. And, and, and this is the point. This is the point that we as Christians need to really ask ourselves about. Mm. If we are indeed dead to the world, dead to worldliness, shouldn't the world be a better place, mm. right? Mm. Shouldn't the world be a better place? People should know that Christianity is true, that Christianity is what it, what it says it is by the way we live. Mm -hmm. And Paul is saying, look, I'm dead to worldliness. I'm not dead to the world around me. I'm not dead to the needs and the feelings and the struggles of the people around me. As a matter of fact, my death to worldliness makes the life of the world around me a better place. I think even think about the life of Jesus, Mm -hmm. right? So when Jesus had all these people following him, he sees thousands, he sees they're hungry. And he's not like, let's transcend our hunger and die to the world. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say that. He's like, hey guys, we need to feed these people. Real practical logistical questions. Yeah, exactly. So Jesus cares not just, he does absolutely care about our spiritual welfare, but he cares about us in every single Mm -hmm. vein of our lives. Mm -hmm. When When I die to the world, it means Jesus is living in me Mm -hmm. and his love flows out. That's not a political stance on issues. That's personal engagement with them Mm -hmm. through the love of Jesus Mm -hmm. to the world. That's a good point. Rather than arguing the inside versus the outside, it's simply the entire person, the entire being, or the Bible calls the heart that needs to be changed. It's not about being good. It's about being like Jesus Christ. And for that to happen, it takes time to know Jesus. If you haven't already, why don't you start today in prayer? And that's my prayer. That's the prayer of all of us here. Thank you for watching Inverse. Thank you for watching this entire quarter of Galatians. We'll see you next time.